Alexander and Elena are picking through the ruins of their home. We were here in the corridor when it was bombed. We were hiding there and climbed out when it finished. Everything fell on my hand, on my head. We covered ourselves. Zhitomir is just one more town that's been in the line of Russian fire 150 kilometers from Kiev. This strike hit at night in early March, with authorities later saying a cruise missile had killed four people. We'll rebuild everything. We will plant new plants, rebuild the house. The foundation is solid, so we'll build from there. The two are now living in another apartment elsewhere in town. Its owner lives in France with his family. I'm on pills already. I no longer have tears left to cry. It's thought the strike had meant to target a nearby military base. But with Russia increasingly using unguided dumb munitions, they're hitting residential districts more and more often. On the other side of the street, a hospital. It too was badly damaged. It's the site of Zhitomir's maternity ward, where staff have been forced to take extreme measures. Nowadays we uh, work uh, underground uh, and uh, in the night, if you have an emergency situation, we work only here, only here. And we, ha uh, we do here cesarean section uh, and have uh, delivery too. Thirteen patients were present during our visit, both those waiting to give birth and new mothers like Victoria. She fled from Sviatopetrivska close to Kiev after the Russian army surrounded her town. There's a gift and uh, I thank uh, medicine uh, personnel that uh, they have to work in a difficult conditions. Uh, it's unbelievable the things that uh, they did and they're doing. Uh, they have um, uh, given hope for other mothers and his child. Cradling her newborn son, Orest, the pressure weighed on her heavily. I don't wish anyone that we felt now, that we're feeling now. It's a disaster. I hope that it will end it as quickly as it possible. <sighs> Victoria wasn't Sorry. alone in being forced to leave. Zhitomir has become a regional hub for Ukrainians fleeing the fighting further east and seeking relative safety. One family had just escaped from Hostomol near the capital and Russian occupation. There wasn't even any bread for two weeks. There was nothing in the shops. Russian troops were stealing from the shops. They went from one house to the next, kicking in the locks and doors, shouting at people, go to Russia, Ukraine is bad, Russia is good. When we left, we had no gas. They switched it off, saying it was Russian gas. We hid. We left our shelter when there were no more enemy convoys going past. We were scared. Even when we heard the siren in Zhitomir, we thought they would even get us here. There's nothing left. Incomprehension with the displaced is universal. Is your territory not enough for you? Truly, isn't it enough for you? What more do you want from Ukraine? Before moving further west, the family will get aid from the town at centers like this one. Zhitomir has become a logistical hub with humanitarian aid flowing one way and displaced people the other. Staff have been working flat out. Those applications aren't just from IDPs. With the town's economy at a standstill and prices spiraling, all too many are coming from Zhitomir's own residents who can barely make ends meet. It's all made my life unbearable. My whole family is out of work and dependent on me. It's my first time coming here. Before that, we lived on what stores of food we had. Some residents failing to grapple with the system in place or get through by phone have been turned away. They told us we can't get assistance until we register. 
But I don't know how to do that. It's very hard for me to use the internet. It would be much easier if you could just register on the spot and then get help the next day. Behind much of Zhitomir's efforts to provide such help stand the city authorities. With repeated bombardments, defenses have sprung up across the town, leaving almost a siege mentality in people's minds. At the town hall, Mayor Serhi Sukhomlin told us he hadn't even been home since the war broke out, and even during his interview, air raid sirens sounded once more. We took the camera gear and headed for cover. Such alerts sound in Jitomir perhaps 10 times a day, leading authorities to install Wi-Fi routers and shelters to keep people connected. We continued the interview downstairs, where Sukhomlin told us about the picture that had been on his wall, a portrait of Mahatma Gandhi, whose pacifist values were close to the mayor's own. Given the war, though, and what the mayor called a failure of political diplomacy, Ukrainians saw no other way than to defend themselves. Just a few days before the war, I spoke to the people with whom I trained, who were all now serving in Russia. I said to them, we spend a lot of time at military college. We all ate from the same pot. We slept under the same open sky. But if you come here, we'll kill you. That kind of determination to defend their nation has kept up Ukraine's resistance in the face of Russia's invasion. And with Moscow regrouping its forces ahead of another offensive, the question for Ukrainians now is how long it will take for the long night of war to give way to a dawn of peace.